for the internet will. All right. Well, so it is definitely good to see you up and around, my friend. It's it's good to be out. It's uh, I've been confined here lately, and I'm glad to be back out in the in in the wind and on the water. <laughs> so uh, so plans are uh, you, you got you got customers coming back in starting yep. next week or this starting week? this week. This got week? a got awesome. a good week. You know, we've got a little little weather coming in Wednesday and Thursday, but hey. They make good rain gear. Frog Paul's got some good gear out there, so uh, we'll be out there with it. Well, I see we got a couple of folks jumping on, guys. If you could just drop us a comment on uh, whether we got good audio, Mike Godfrey. Good morning, Lee. How you doing? Morning, Mike. Good morning, Alan. Thanks for jumping on. Shane, back with us. Shane's been with us all weekend. Oh, he just man. bought one of those uh, Avid 20XBs. The, yeah. The new, yeah. Uh, he's, I guess, the second second 20-foot bass boat from Avid that we've sold. Um, and he got it decked out. Jack plate, uh, power poles. I think you put, what, pen optics on that thing? Uh, oh, man. He's he's ready. He's oh, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. He, does, uh, he does a bunch of uh, aluminum boat um tournament fishing okay. i think uh over in georgia area is that right yeah we were on but uh all right guys so i'm gonna assume that uh you can hear us if you can't please comment so we can get that fixed as quickly as possible i always worry that we'll drone on and on for 20 minutes and then it'll turn out that, that all they see is our lips moving and uh, nothing coming out so that, that's like my wife that's, that's <laughs> oh all she, that's all she ever hear when i'm talking all she sees is my mouth moving she doesn't she doesn't hear what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> all right good morning guys michael wildman here from bucks island um with uh, another little live for our virtual fish fest sitting here with uh, the the lee pitts uh from weiss and uh you do gotten on neely oh, as well Henry. yes, yes um so uh, if you've been around bucks island at all you've seen lee um and certainly if you're around this area and in the fishing scene uh, you know his uh, big, beautiful face. Um, but uh, <laughs> it is great to have you here. I know you've been going through some some health stuff. Um, so we are definitely excited to see you getting up and uh, getting rolling. Um, yeah. So, yep. Um, and uh, just uh, super appreciative for, for you being here. Well, thank you for having me. Like I said, I always enjoy, uh, e even if I'm not on with you, I'm down here wandering around. <laughs> touching these new boats and looking at all the all the new tackle up in the law so i'm always around somewhere all right so guys while we're here uh like we've been doing uh at the end of this we'll pick a winner to get another five free entries into our raffle uh we'll be doing that raffle next monday uh the big uh big thing that you're going to win is the chance we're doing that straight up fishing again with brian latimer so somebody oh, wow. need, we're going to get four guys yeah. that are going to win fishing with Ryan and Scott Canterbury and Matt Heron and Wes Logan for a little one day, uh, you know, probably the fiercest competition those four have all year. Um, I know the, the coveted uh, Bucks Island straight up fishing plaque is, is mm -hmm. I mean, it's right up there with the, the classic, I think. I tell you what, and those four <laughs> that you mentioned right there, that's uh, that that's some tough competition right there. Those, those are the best of the best around these parts and, and nationwide. They uh, that was a lot of fun last year, so we're doing that again. Um, and then we got coolers, we've got tackle. Um, Strike King sent us like seventy eight spools of line. Wow. Um, I mean, it, it's it's uh, we got a bunch of stuff to give away. So we're gonna do all that. We gotta get rid of it all before we start getting the next uh, bit of stuff to give away for the in-person fish fest we're gonna try okay. and see if uh we can do that again and i'm i'm sure we'll probably have you uh you come in and uh, probably do some more crappie talking uh probably uh we gotta figure out the schedule march april whatever mm -hmm. you know hard to pick schedules these this yeah time i can't wait year, so. can't wait it's always a good time all right guys so drop us some crappie questions um and i guess if you want to you can drop a couple bass uh bass questions but today uh, we're, we're going to mainly try and stick with crappie. I know you got, you got some stuff to show folks. 
Um, and uh, I'd, I'd appreciate the questions coming in, guys. That's what makes these a lot of fun to do um, and get you the information that, that you want. Um, so on the website, if you are shopping tackle online today, the discount code is crappie. So all of our crappie stuff that we've got on our website, along with uh, all of our apparel that we've got on there, Bucks Island gear, we've got some really nice uh, skier jackets. You're speaking about rain mm -hmm. gear. Um, we've got some really, really nice rain gear. Um, so that's all discounted 10%. And then for every 10 bucks you spend on tackle um, the rest of this week, uh, you're going to get another entry into that raffle. So that's the commercial for Virtual Fish Fest. We'll get into talking fishing, guys. All right. We'll start out with a nice long one. And I don't know if I can read that much. Good morning. I'm wanting to get started crappie fishing so I can get my wife uh, and I doing something together. Uh, I do have a bass boat, but need some tips that I can can do to locate crappie. Time of the year that's best, equipment to use, maybe some do's and don'ts. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, you, you know, that that's that's a great question to get us started on right there. There's so many people that I have that come see me that that's the whole key. They're getting into some kind of fishing that they can take their kids, their wife and make it a whole family affair. That way everybody's having fun. They're all together. They're enjoying themselves on the water. Um, you know, the, the good thing about crappie fishing, you don't have to go out and break the bank to get started in this. All right. You know, you can, you can really, start out as simple as as just you know we grew up fishing with cane poles you know and you don't get much simpler than a cane pole <laughs> but uh it, it was one of those things where we'd go and we'd dob those treetops down in south alabama and that's how when the they call them white perch down there they don't call okay. them crappie but when they go to running bucket of minnows a cane pole with a bobber on it and you're set um really around around here on the coosa chain of lakes um even Gunnersville, uh, some of the other waters, you can get out uh, inexpensive spinning gear, uh, even Zipco 33 push buttons. I mean, you okay. can use that. Uh, small jig heads, 132nd, uh, 124th, even a 16th or something like that. Light line, uh, I, I would anywhere from four to 10 pound test. You know, okay. you're looking at that. But, but starting out, especially this time of year, a lot of fish, they get around these docks. It doesn't matter if it's a floating dock, stationary dock, um, the, the marinas that had several, several slips together. That, that's a place that these fish can congregate. They can get in. They've got protection from, from the sunlight. There's plenty of bait fish around there, so they don't have to really use up a whole lot of energy to ambush prey. Okay. But... Throwing little jigs around there, um, little curly tails, or, or this time of year in the fall especially, I like the little stinger tails, you know, something that you don't have to move a whole lot, and it still puts off a little bit of vibration. Um, that, or just go back to the real thing and stick them in on there and throw it out with a bobber, and when it goes under, jerk. All right. That's, it's, that's, that's a simple way so to get started. If you got a bass boat already, and then you – you probably already got plenty of of, of tackle mm -hmm. rods reels so that ought to be pretty um uh, pretty simple to get started right yeah yeah it should be and like i said the biggest thing is just like you said what your whole goal is getting you and your wife out the more you go the more you get on the water the more you piddle around and kind of look for different kind of things uh you're going to learn and then you'll have uh which everybody does you'll start finding your little places where hey I can go catch me a couple there real quick and we'll get get going so with speaking of this time of year um or when is the best time of the year for crappie fishing you, you know really it's got two seasons um we'll have a, a real good fall season uh which normally you know it's been a little hotter this this mm -hmm. september and and october so it's kind of delayed it a little bit but october november early december is a real good time for the fall fishing Bass and crappie, everything's feeding up. But then uh, around here, you know, I have a lot of clients that come from up north that, that they're trying to get out and beat the weather and beat that snow. They're sick of it. But here about mid-January, we start our spring. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll have that spring season, and we'll follow those fish from when they're still in their winter haunts out there 
all the way in as they migrate up and, and, and start going to the backs of these creeks to, to do their spawn. We'll go from mid January all the way to May. Okay. And, uh, and then kind of once they spawn, we'll still catch them around some boat docks, shooting those docks. Uh, sometimes depending on weather, even into the first of June, you know, so we, we got, we got a pretty, pretty good season for crappie. All right. Well, I know, uh, I mean, yesterday was spectacular weather. Um, I know the, the bite's been pretty tough, at least on the bass side, uh, especially you look at the, the, you know, the results of the open this past week, those, those guys, it was definitely a slug fest to, to yeah. try and find stuff. Is that, I mean, is that trending kind of similar with the crappie bite around here? It, the crappie with the one good thing, crappie's a little better. All so, right. So it's, All uh, right. uh, even like I said, with, a, with our bass fish and a lot of these guys that I talk to and, and compete against and fish against and, and see, um, you know, they're all ready for this fall bite to turn on. Everybody's just thinking, Hey, any day it's going to happen. Luckily with our crappie, they're already out in some of that, the deeper creeks. Okay. Uh, uh, all of the rivers around here, even if it's a, a visible lay down somewhere that you can fish, but in, in the deeper creeks, the, the man-made structure to the, to the natural stumps and, and, and drop offs and hard bottoms, they're starting to kind of wad up on that. And, okay. and that's what we're looking for to get out there with each fish. Uh, they get ready for that fall and they start to feed a little bit. That's the biggest thing. All right. So maybe if you haven't been thinking about going crappie fishing and uh, you just get tired of getting out there trying to find the bass, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. I know a lot of guys, they'll swap <laughs> midday. Well, I know Matt Heron, I saw his a uh, couple of his posts uh, yesterday. He was out with his son, with Josh, um, finding some slabs. So Scott and, uh, I mean, they, they enjoy uh, this time of the year. Oh, yeah. Of course, they're not going to do it near as much because their schedule has gotten so <laughs> deviated. But um, And then comes the discussion of not – do you go get in the deer stand or do you go out crappie fishing? So, well, um, uh, you know, you can hunt in the mornings and then <laughs> put the boat in at 10 30 and finish out the day. All so. right. All right. I like the attitude. Uh, are they biting under piers yet? So, they're, they're getting there. Getting there. Yeah, they're they're getting right. there. It's uh, some of the, some of the deeper piers uh, have got some fish on it. Uh, right now, I, I'm I'm going through a lot of small fish to okay. get those couple of good ones that are there. But once again, the cooler that it gets, uh, and, and you can, I got out on my dock yesterday and was looking, and you could tell that some of the bait fish mm -hmm. are starting to back on in, getting a little more shallow, and, okay. and they're doing that. Once they do that, that's when these fish really are going to pile into these docks, and uh, and even like I said, some. Uh, a lot, a lot of the the floating docks are overlooked by a lot of guys because, like myself, I, I like to see those old old school docks that have about had their better day. Yeah, you yep, know that yep. that's the ones I like. But, okay, uh, you know a lot of these fish they'll get where they can. You know they're looking for shade, so they'll get underneath. Uh, I, I've caught them in in some of these marinas where they've got floating docks, and it may be twenty five foot of water, but the fish are only three to four foot of water under the docks. Okay. So they're they're using it just like it's you know, breaking it for shade and also they're ambushing prey right there too. So it's a you know something that you don't need to overlook. All right. Shane, just go to Weiss, try for bass, and you'll catch crappie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that, that says that's good for our crappie fishing up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. All you right. must be throwing a big old rattle trap out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my Godfrey, uh, never been crappie fishing. Lee's gonna have to teach me uh, when he's healed and ready to go again. Well, it sounds like you're healed and ready to go again. I, I'm getting there. I, I'm still a. Uh, not a hundred percent, but right. but you know I, I'm getting there. Uh, I, I don't want to go out there and like you see these uh, bass masters on TV jumping any of those waves right now. But I can handle mm -hmm. a little chop. So All right. Mike, whenever you're ready, man, I I need a I need a good net man. So come on out. I'll <laughs> we'll get us some supper anyway. All right. Well, we'll uh we'll, we'll save uh, some recipe tips. Uh, yeah. Speaking of supper, because I know uh, a lot of folks really love eating that crappie. So. We'll, we'll dive into this before we're done because um, I'm, I'm curious about that. All right, Ethan, uh, what rod is best for shooting docks? 
Well, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I love I love shooting docks. It's uh, it's one of those things that really, depending on your build, uh, you know, I, I've got I got a long wingspan, so I I like a six and a half to seven foot rod okay and that allows me for one i can back off of that dock a little bit i don't have to be just right up in it so i'm not worried about my trolling motor you know blowing water up in that dock and spooking the fish uh i've got one right here if i can kind of show you a little bit this is a lose pro series right here it's, it's a one-piece rod and uh i know sometimes when you get the longer rods you're gonna have a two-piece but this has got excellent feel very light uh, this is a six six you know and i've got a, a lose mach one um 100 series and that's a spin speed light right there uh spin okay. speed light and, and you don't have a whole lot of line capacity on this reel i know he was asking about the rod but right. you really don't need it for shooting dogs you know right. I've, I've got a six pound vicious line on here okay and, and I like a high vis. I'm kind of telling you the whole setup what I've got here, but I like that high vis line. My eyes aren't quite what they used to be, and, and and plus a lot of times with your crappie fishing, it's not that explosive strike like a like a guy that flips a jig in their bass fishing where that hope it just jumps. You know, okay. sometime sometime you shoot that you know little light jig head in there, uh, and it may just not sink as far. Or, or you see that line move side to side just barely. So I like that high vis on it. Okay. But but this right here with this is uh, the Pro Series from Lou's. You know, it, it's, it's got a price point right there where everybody can afford a yeah. couple of them. Um, you know, it's something that you, the whole setup I've got right there, you know, you can get a couple of those and go out and fish in your set. You okay. Know. Well, hopefully that answers uh, some good info there. Um, so you talk about getting in close to the docks. Um, what do you find? So you, you want to try and stay as far away as you, you comfortably can. Yeah. Do you feel like that they, you can spook the crappie yeah, easier than uh, you can spook bass or. Well, I'll, I'll tell you those, there? those crappie now, and especially this time of year, they get just as much pressure as these bass are getting. Okay. So it doesn't take them long to learn, you know, when, when you, you roll up in there and all of a sudden you're getting too close and you turn that trolling motor around and you send a bust of water through there to push yourself back off of it. They, they know something's wrong. Okay. You know, it kind of scatters them out and they'll, they, they know when something's wrong. So what I try to do, I'll stay far enough off of that dock where I'm, I'm comfortable. And, and two, that'll give you a better, is it projectory? Yeah. Is that what you angle? Angle. You yeah. About? Yeah. Okay. You, you can get back off of it a little bit when you're shooting and it'll help you to skip it more instead of being right up on it where, where you, you don't have that good angle of backed off of it. And then too, it gives you more time. If you're fighting a fish and the boat's drifting, you don't have to really stay on that trolling motor quite gotcha. as much. You, gotcha. know, you, you can kind of back off and work it without getting right up there on it. Do you, uh, thoughts on running electronics, running your, uh, you think that sonar makes a difference with, most of your down imaging, you know, if you're shooting docks, uh, I know everybody is is going to some of some of the more uh, live scope things right. now where right. they're looking at them. And I, I'm still a little old school. I mean, I, I've been in the boat with some guys, and man, it's great. I will say that you can really, really see them. Um, my thing is, there's a lot of times you can see them, and you know they're right there, but uh, unless you get them to cooperate with you and want to bite a little bit. It don't do you no good to look at them, you know. So I, I, I still want to. Well, I can that. know you're there, and I know you're not biting. So I don't know. Do you feel better about yourself or not? <laughs> exactly. I get to thinking, huh? So you know, something. I'm not getting something here. All right. All right. Chuck Allen asks, uh, "Is it okay to eat the crappie from Logan Martin?" You, you know, I hope. I shouldn't say this because this is I've just been through some stuff, but uh, I, I hope it's eating crappie that gets me, you know, because you're going to have to eat a whole bunch of them. I've had people talk about that. Uh, I, I don't think there's any danger of eating crappie out of any of our Coosa lakes. Uh, okay. You know, I've, I've, I've ate them all my life. Uh, and I know that a lot of people, like I said, it's, I've heard some people say something and I'm not sure what it was about uh, 
mercury or, or something, but I tell you what, man, that's you, you're gonna have to get on them every single day, okay. three meals a day. If, if, if I don't think you got anything to worry about, hold on just a second, we got UPS showing up here. Okay, um, if you want to go in that office right down there, um, and uh, somebody can help you out, okay, all right, <laughs> my, my mama, oh. yeah. <laughs> You know, that's the way it rolls around here. Um, we're, we're actually not open uh, officially, so uh, everybody's not around. But uh, I know uh, a whole bunch of guys back there getting getting caught up on uh, rigging boats and uh, doing maintenance. So, all right. So your 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 philosophy is eat eat the fish. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I don't see. Um, I, I'm I'm going to eat them. You know, it's uh, we we love them at our you know at my house. Uh, we're going to fry that crappie up and we're going to have fish fries and we're going to eat them and you do much on uh, logan martin a little bit there? i don't get that way as much as i would like to uh logan martin is is a great crappie lake i mean it really is not only bass fishing mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's got some some really really good crappie fishing down at logan martin i just uh, i don't get to go down that way as much as i would like to because i'm i'm always here at neely henry and wise all right well, guys, um, well, uh, we got a few more questions I'm seeing in there. Do me a favor. If you would hit that share button, uh, that would be awesome. And remember, the more comments, uh, the more questions you ask, the more chance you have to win at the end uh, to get picked. Uh, Shane that's asking us some of these questions, he, he learned that the, uh, the easy way. Uh, he actually got – he won twice uh, this past weekend, so – Oh man, he's um, gonna buy a lottery tickets. Yeah. Uh, well, I, if only you could just comment to win those lotteries. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Shane said the uh, crankbait and caught the biggest crappie ever. So I guess that's like going deer hunting and all the turkeys show up. And uh, oh, yeah. Then you get out and go turkey hunting and all the deer show up. You, you know, he, him saying that about a crankbait, they will eat it. And the biggest crappie that I've caught on Neely Henry, uh -huh. I caught a 3 8 here. And I caught it uh, on a jerk bait, bass fishing. <laughs> you know, as much as I crappie fish here, the biggest one I've ever caught caught it on. I mean, a big old long jerk bait too. He 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 choked it. All right, best uh, best tips on long line trolling. The the biggest thing on trolling. That's that's a that's a good buddy of mine, old Chris Hobbs. He he's he's getting into this long lining, so he's trying uh -oh. to get some secrets out of me. On all right, all right. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the best thing I can tell you about long lining, when you first start out, it's going to be a little bit frustrating. Uh, the, the biggest thing is, and people overlook this, boat handling mm -hmm. has probably 75% to do with your catching long line trolling. Okay. Uh, boat speeds, the, the being constant with your speeds, not having those rods, you know, jump up and down and, and uh, in your turns those lines are behind you uh what i try to do is i keep all the lines about the same distance okay that way when i make my turns and i over exaggerate my turn in the boat when i'm turning everything falls the same everything picks back up the same okay and, and one thing that i can go ahead and tell you especially on the coosa lakes you're going to catch catfish you're going to catch stripe and when you do if he hits the outside line on the right side of your boat, the first thing that fish is going to do is run through every line you've got to go to the other side. Get the fish in the boat, cut your lines, retie everything, and go out. Don't try to untangle that mess that he's going to wad up because you're going to get mad and it's going to cost you half a day. Just cut them and retie and go on about your business. That uh, sounds like something you learn from experience. Daily. Um, so, all right. <laughs> is, there, is there a better time of the year to long line? Yeah. Um, and, and it too, it, it, like I was talking about with our, our spring seasons, when it starts following those fish, when the fish start really balling up and just not holding on cover, they're, they're okay. just following the, the, you know, the shad, uh, the, the minnows, they're just following the bait. Mm -hmm. And that's where that long lining comes into play they're not holding on cover they're moving on you so you can cover more water moving with them and try and just uh intercept them as they're going into the the backs of these creeks all right josh mcdonald springtime color jigs versus fall time colors 
throw, throw the same thing or their colors in the fall that seem to work better? You, you know, um, I know a lot of people that don't worry about the colors too much. Uh, I, I've noticed in my with my long lining, sometimes I've got eight or ten rods out. You can go through a school of fish, and it can be as small a difference as the head color. You can you can go through and and let's say you got one color on two rods. That's the only two rods that are getting bit when you go through those those schools. Okay, uh, you change everything around to that color, then everything's getting bit. I mean that tells me that color has a lot to do with it. Yeah. I, I I like uh, you know in my in my Bobby Garland products, you know your bluegrass. Um, of course, monkey milk, everybody's that, the electric chicken, uh, something with some, a uh, little bit of orange in it. I like the, uh, uh, some of the pinks, you know, a lot of people think I'm kidding on that, but a lot of times a pink head with, with that, uh, that Bobby Garland baby shad or the slab slayer on there may get bit more than a blue head or something like that. So I, I play with my colors a lot. Um, I, I like your black and chartreuse, your bone white chartreuse, things like that and also watch watercolor okay. um you know that has a lot to do with it too kind of something you you want something that they can they can find uh because you're not dealing with a whole lot of vibration with these crappie baits so i i swap my colors up quite a bit through the day just to you know just to see if i can find what they really want all right well i guess kind of along the same lines of that um how far have you you know what other parts of the country other types of, of bodies of water have you done some crappie fishing on um i know you know obviously kusa pretty typically right. a pretty stained what most people think of a, mm -hmm. a pretty muddy muddy body of water have you have you done that i mean that color that color discussion and all that kind of stuff and, and any other bodies of water yeah it uh you know i, I fish texas quite a bit um we, we've been to uh, sam rayburn or some of that okay. also Oklahoma, you know, up at Grand, uh, Fort Gibson, okay, and, and some of those those lakes up there, it, it tends to be the the same colors produce, okay. you know, and and a lot of it, I'll tell you this too, a whole lot of it is what you've got confidence in. If you've got a, you know, it's kind of like my daddy, uh, bass fishing. It didn't matter if it was December or July, he was going to throw a snag with Sally with some Uncle Josh pork rind. It didn't matter, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he was going to throw if, if he caught one. That's what it's going to be on. So All right. confidence goes a long way with crappie fishing too. Okay. Well, let's see. My God for you, Bucks needs to uh, have a crappie fry. I agree. Oh, all right. Well, I can't. I can't make any plans for that one. We'll, we'll have to. <laughs> we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, what's your favorite jig color to throw? Okay. A uh, little bit more on the color question. You know, uh, once again, I like either pink or orange head with your uh, Cajun cricket because it, it's got a lot of orange in it. Also with the bluegrass, the, the colors kind of blend together real well. A lot of times I'll, I'll put with the, uh, the, the monkey milk or some of the uh, powder blue, um, more shad color baits. I may go with a light blue head. Uh, and then too, sometimes I may just throw – um, just a regular lead head. Okay. You know, if it's something that it's one of those days that they're wanting a, a, a little dull color, don't want to see it quite as much, just get more of a reaction strike. I may do that. And it's, um, uh, but, but I really like the, the, the orange pink heads, uh, that, that seems to be on, on the waters that I'm fishing around here locally. That seems to be doing pretty good. All right. Clay said, what's up, Lee? Good to see you, buddy. Good to be out, man. Thanks, Clay. All right. I This is a very important question to me. Is, uh, this is definitely something I'm, I'm interested in. Crappie recipe. So how do you like to cook your crappie? There's not but one way to cook them. That's fry them. All right. You know, batter them up, throw them in the fryer, and a lot of times they won't never make it to the table. <laughs> like I said, that's how it goes around my place. It uh, that you always have a bunch of buddies when when they can tell that grease is getting hot, everybody starts showing up. Uh, so. all right. Well, you throw any special seasoning in with your uh, yeah. your batter? Or? Yeah, I like uh, you know that they make several good fish batters. Uh, I, I like to throw. I, I hope I'm saying this right. That Tony Shasheries 
okay. uh, Cajun okay. Creole in there with it. You like a little little spice? I in like it? a little kick to All it. All right, you know, throw a little something in there, mix it up, and whatever falls out of the cabinet, you know, a lot of times mix it up in the bag with them. Have you have you tried any other? You, you kind of just stick with what you what I, you know in life. Yeah, I, I did something one time with a. Uh, it was a more heavy breaded, and I, I don't remember the name brand. I won't say, but it was a, a like a lemon, some kind of. Nah, I, I, nah. I, I like I like a little kick. <laughs> I like that Cajun. You know, you put a little spice to it in that Cajun recipe. You can't go wrong. All right. Guys, I'm I am uh, I'm genuinely curious if if you got a good way that you like uh, crappie, drop yeah, drop I, a I, comment. Um, you know, I, that's a uh, now somebody will get on me about that lemon thing. I guarantee you. Yeah. I'll have somebody say, hey, that's that's how we cook. Hey, you do you, all right? You do you. <laughs> um, Mike liked and shared as always. No problem. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate your uh, your support. Um. Let's see here. Shane said he had the best luck with a uh, bright yellow. Yeah. Now that's a good spring color too. That 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 yellow head. I know a lot of people they, they swear by it. All right. Yeah. And we got a second for the crappie fry. Well, I don't know. We when we've done the uh, fish fest last year, we we had a, a bunch of great uh, smoked chicken in here, mm -hmm. and uh, that was good. I don't know. Um, go go tell Dano. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can do. I don't know. I don't know if we can do, um, I guess you, you could buy a farm raised crappie and we could do something with that. I don't know about, uh, serving. We have to put, uh, Dano on a crappie task force. Let him, <laughs> he'll get out there with me. I'd like to see him with some of those rod holders, about eight rods set out. <laughs> Get go through a school of fish. And, uh, that might make a good uh, Bucks <laughs> Island Live. Yeah, um, getting jumping out there. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. So seriously though, uh, you know, a random thought on on serving the food this this year has been nuts because that's the conversation we've had to have with the whole COVID thing and and mm -hmm. serving food and it. I just I'm ready for 2021 when it comes to all that, <laughs> and we'll, we'll make we'll we'll figure some stuff out. But I I'd second the the fish if we can figure out how to do something with that. Um, uh, hey guys, good morning, good morning, Michelle. Thanks for jumping in. Bear Creek has some big crappie in it. Yes, they do. Good good crappie lake. All right. Uh, do you think after the lakes uh, took a beating this spring, it will have an effect on the crappie? You, you know, all of our lakes are, are used to a lot of, you know, a lot of traffic on them, a lot of, a lot of guys fishing it. One thing I did realize this year and kind of I, I watched this, the water fluctuated a whole lot on us. You know, we had mm -hmm. uh, late February, another little flood came through on oh, us. Yeah. Um, that took a lot of the crappie anglers off the water and plus took some of the crappie out of the areas that we normally catch them. Um, you know, every lake has cycles that they go through. Um, I, I, I don't think that, that last spring is going to be any different than what we've had to kind of go through, you know, the, the past several years. Um, we may have to adapt some of our fishing techniques a little bit Gotcha. different to some of this you know like i said mother nature they she takes care of everything so well that yeah. that was a pretty consistent discussion through this past weekend with uh with everybody that we've had on uh, tracy was talking about it yesterday about you know it, if you're local and you know these waters and you're always going to the same spots the reality is that that the you know the environment changes and the fish change with it exactly so you know it's, it's like deer hunting if you if you go keep going the same place every day they find them somewhere else that's safe and they don't have to deal with that uh you know all, all the all the people coming in and out all the time all right so you i guess bottom line you you think the fish are still gonna be there yeah you just gotta maybe work a little harder to, to go find them and it may be that like i said some of the areas that we're used to catching them in may get uh, a little more pressure to them so the fish may and they may not set up kind of like what they always have. It may right. be something that we're overlooking. I, I know a lot of times, and especially my dock shooting, 
you'll go hit these docks. And, and I'm not afraid to go behind some people. I'll sit there and watch them, let them go through, because so many people just want to hit the fronts of these docks. You know, right. I'm, I'm going to go right through it, and I'm going to hit those front poles and go on. I've, I've done it a lot of times, come in from an angle, shoot across through there, not get bid and work a dock really hard, get to the other corner, and just taking a different angle. Mm -hmm. uh, what You're working the same dock poles you just fished, but the fish are positioned up on that a little different. Okay. So when you shoot it through a different angle, instead of that bait coming from behind them, and when it's past them and they're like, man, you know, I'm, I'm not aggressive. I don't want to chase it down. But all of a sudden when you shoot another angle and it falls right in their face, you know, I mean, they, they're going to get it. It's just, you know, it's, it's in their nature. They're going to eat. So I really try to work, you know, different angles and work a dock real well before I leave it. Might might be a good argument for some of the, the pen optics, the live scopes yeah. and the 360s yeah. and the ability to see a little bit further up under. At least knowing the fish are there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can't beat the uh, Cajun seasoning. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not surprised that we get a lot of folks on here that uh, like that spicy stuff. Uh, send the pro staff out to catch lunch. Well, I don't think we got a uh, – I think Matt and Scott, uh, they get out there and uh, fill their freezer. Um, so I don't know that they'd share, um, to be honest. They, they oh. don't get a whole lot of time mm -hmm. to get out there and go no, fishing. No, crappie's so. gold. I mean, but they're – uh -uh, it's gold and i don't get to keep a lot of fish you know every now and then i'll have some clients that yep. said hey we we don't eat them don't want to fool with them and i am more than happy to take them home so <laughs> <laughs> all right Lindsay said uh is it best to hit the brush piles in the winter time it depending on water depth uh right now the fish are are really starting to move towards the brush piles uh in the deeper water okay um also, like I said, in springtime, you know, they'll really get up once that spring starts getting a little warmer water and closer to the spawn. They really like to get in that wood cover and beat and bang around and get up on these dock posts and uh, and getting those shallow water brush piles. So it's all with uh, with water temperature and time of year. Okay. So talking back to long line and how fast do you troll uh, when you're long lining? I, I, I change my speeds normally, uh, which I'm probably 75 to 80 percent of the time I'm under a mile an hour. Okay. Uh, and, and that also is going to depend on what size bait that I'm pulling. Uh, I like a 124th. 124th is a real light head, but I'm only using six pound test. And, and also with some of the baits, like with your. Uh, Bobby Garland, Baby Sheds, your Slab Slayers, Miniminders, it doesn't have a lot of appendages out on it okay. that, that drags in the water to make it rise. Okay. So uh, I'm either 0 0.07, 0 0.08, uh, and, and a lot of times that speed does make a lot of difference because if, if you're either too slow and you're going under the fish, you, you're missing out on them. If you're getting it too high over the fish and they're not aggressive, you're going to miss some of those bites. Um, that there are times that I have to pick it up to probably one mile an hour, uh, a, a mile and a half. If I'm throwing, let's say, a, a, a pulling a 16th and, and I've got a series of some humps or some, some shallower water that I'm going up in, right. I want to kick those speeds up then to bring that bait up higher to keep it off the bottom. Well, oh, it's long line and I, I, I can't help but think we, we need to, Take a look at building a, a kayak rig to, to go I've out seen and them. do the doing the long line and there there was a guy uh last year on Weiss Lake and those of you that I don't know if you fish Weiss Lake a whole lot with long lining, but there may be 50, 60 boats just in a wad. I mean, you really get to to know your partners out there, you know. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> and uh, and you gotta keep keep an eye out, but he, he had a setup with his kayak that had uh, a rod holder off the backside right. and then one off the front. So he had it catty cornered. And I asked him, why didn't he have him on the same side? He said to balance it out because those rod tips with them being longer. Yeah. And he was right there in the middle and, and catching fish with everybody else. And now, was he paddling or did he have no, a he had, he had a, okay. a He had a trolling motor on there. Okay. And, and what was so funny. Uh, he didn't have a stringer or a basket. He was just throwing them in the bottom. So as he'd go by, you could hear him thumping. Thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and uh, 
I asked him, I, I said, you, you know, I said, I've got some rope. You need a stringer. He said, I'm eating them anyway. It doesn't matter. So All right. he had it figured out. He, he, he was doing good. He was catching. Do you, uh, well, I guess that, that leads. So you, you try to keep them alive till you can get them home. And, uh, mm-hmm. okay. I, I like to keep them fresh, you know, even, uh, springtime when it starts heating up later spring, uh, I, I take care of them just like I do okay. my bass. You know, I, I want to keep them fresh. I, I like those, uh, could you throw, throw them straight on ice yeah. out on the boat? Or, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, look, there's some options. on that. Actually, Hobie makes a little portable live well um, for okay. for their, their stuff. So, I don't know. We might have to have some, uh, <laughs> some fun with that. Um, all right. Michelle caught a slab crappie in summer on a big five-and-a-half-inch swim bait <laughs> on Gunnersville. I guy must have been hungry. Yeah, and they they will eat them over there too. So it's uh, you know, it, it, it it's crazy. We used to all the time. We'd catch them in the spring uh, throwing spinner baits, bass fishing. Mm-hmm. A big old crappie will thump a spinner bait. Now, right. He'll get on it. You get it in front of him. He's hungry. Like he said, he'll get it. It amazes me how how big uh, how big the appetite is uh, on some of these fish. Um, <laughs> All right. Does uh, does size matter? That's a good um, good question. It, it it does, and even with uh, with live bait, um, down at some of the marinas there, where people that they'll come in buying their minnows, I've seen a lot of these guys say, uh, "Kick the big ones out. I don't want any of those big minnows." And and I got to to listen to them and watching them, and, and there's times where I mean that they want that little bitty profile. They want something smaller. They, okay. they don't want that big bulky bait banging around through there. And even with live bait, I mean, there's a lot of times they, they prefer that smaller minnow over a bigger one too. So yeah, it, at times size does matter. Okay. Any, uh, I mean, how do you, how do you approach figuring that out? Um, it, a, a lot of the times um, I've got multiple rods out. Okay. And, and, and I do it for a reason. I'll kind of swap things around. I try to start out every day of what was hot the day before. Gotcha. And then I've got rods that I'm playing with through the day as I'm going and can tell. Um, I, I do pay a lot of attention to my hummingbirds. You know, I, yep. I watch my graphs, yep. especially with that down imaging. If, if we get over brush piles and you can see fish, you want to try to figure out pretty quick what they want and what they don't want. So that that's one of the things I do, just trial and error. Well, and I mean, I guess you have the added advantage in that you do it for a living. And so you get to, to really see day to day, um, which is great for us because you call in with a fishing report and uh, it's uh, right, it's right. going to be um, the, the latest and greatest. But uh, OK. Uh, all right. Do you catch more black or white crappie when you go fishing? It, it's a it's a mixture Um Early spring, we, we tend to catch more black crappie. Uh, they, they seem to be some of the first fish that are pulling up. Um, some of the some of the other lakes, Tennessee waterways, you'll you'll start catching more white crappie. Okay. Uh, postpone. Okay. Uh, you know some of the later fish doing there. So once again, that's kind of a, a seasonal deal. But but overall, on our our Coosa chains, it, it's a it's a good mixture. You know, through through the the whole season, it's a good mixture of white and black crop. Which one eats better? They both good. Uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> that one with the most meat on it. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and of course, fried. Oh, uh, fried. That's it. All right. Well, guys, uh, we're gonna go about ten or fifteen more minutes if you're up for it, and. Um, just don't forget, drop those comments and questions. Uh, it's fun discussion. Um, I'm learning a lot. But, uh, yep, the more you comment, the more like you are. We'll pick a winner to earn five free tickets uh, into our raffle for uh, the virtual door prizes we'll be doing next Monday. All right, advice on just starting to troll. You know, just be patient. Um, the the hardest thing that I see with a lot of guys out there, uh, and, and a lot of times, especially when you see somebody that's kind of having a hard time or in a bind, you don't want to go to throw in comments to him to try to be helpful because he don't want to hear the helpful comments <laughs> yeah, right then. Yeah. Um, just know that you're going to have times that you're going to get hung up. 
when you do pay attention to your rod tips, the quicker you can see that rod hung. My biggest thing is when, when you're hung, don't worry about turning around to go back and get it, break it off. Okay. You know, reel back in, retie. The, the more that you try to stop, turn around real quick, you, you're going to hang everything up. Gotcha. So kind of kind of roll with the flow and, and know that, hey, I'm going to have times where things are going to get tangled. That's part of it. I'm going to catch a big old catfish. It's going to roll every line up, laugh about it, throw him in the boat, cut the lines, retie everything, get rid of him, and gotcha. you know, j- just, just kind of take everything in stride. Because trolling, and especially if the wind's up, that is a whole different creature that you've got to deal with. Okay. Because then that boat's not going to track straight. You got to hit everything a little bit crooked, trying to fight that wind. And uh, like I said, uh, wind is not your friend when you're long line. So, do you do most of that trolling with your big motor or with your trolling motor? Trolling motor, okay. Yeah, with a trolling motor. All right. Because uh, you still want to be quiet. You know, you don't want to spook these fish. Um, and, and a lot of times, I'll 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 see people um, when when they see those fish on the graph, everybody wants to run over there and stand by the rods because they're at attention then. Just, you know, you don't want a lot of beating and banging in that boat. You still want to be quiet and, uh, you know, just uh, just just roll the flow. Uh, find out what works for you. Uh, a lot of times it's positioning the rods a little bit different. If you are if you keep getting hung up or tangled up, you can spread them apart a little bit or even uh, – I, I don't, you know, on the, the on Weiss Lake, it's a, a three-pole per person uh, gotcha. deal. You can't have more than three poles. A lot of times I don't have but two poles for them. Okay. Or I'll have it set up where I may just put two of the front rods out, one on each side, and then that way they're watching those too, you know, or or if they've got a fish, I'll stick one and just put it back in the holder and when they're done with it, swap rods. So just mm-hmm. you know, just kind of uh it's 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 a it's it's a real fun way to catch fish. When when you get in fish, it's a great way to take children. It keeps them active. It, it, they have fun with it, and they have a good time. But don't get twisted up because you're going to get tangled up. So if you're starting starting out trolling, I mean, do you you recommend starting with one or two rods? I mean, even if you've got I would three uh, three people in the boat, maybe not start out with mm-hmm. six. Just a rod a piece, just to kind of get where you feel comfortable to it. And, and another thing, the distance. Make sure all rods are about the same distance back. Because when, when you do your turns or uh, different making moves to, 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 you know, follow the creek channels or whatever, if they're the same distance out, you're less likely to be hung up a whole lot. All right. Good long line in discussion. All right. Shane said, when I fish with the uh, pan optics around docks, I will use it to look under, under them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great tool. All right. What is the best rod uh, for uh, to trolling with? There's so many different rods out right now. Um, I went down to Academy last week and picked up a couple, and I think these were. I think I got two Shakespeare's and a couple of the the H two O's. Uh, very affordable. I mean, the mm-hmm. the rods are you know j- just you're not spending. I think I gave. Sixteen dollars a piece for the rods, All right. and you don't need a, a highly sensitive rod because you're not manipulating that rod all day long. Gotcha. You know, you're you're wanting a little bit longer rod, and, and two, I say l- the longer rods in the back. I use shorter rods, okay, because I'm more straight trailing the boat back there with my back. I want to keep those straight out. So when, uh, behind when you the say boat. shorter, what kind of length are you talking? Six six, okay. you know, seven foot. So some people like six foot. You know, just just whatever works for you. Um, especially with kids too. Don't don't expect to hand that kid a fourteen foot rod, and him be able to work it because I I don't like a fourteen foot rod. Gotcha. I mean, it's one of those things. Nobody's used to reeling a fish up with those eight and ten foot rods. I mean, you're going to reel it up, and when you pick it up, it's like you're flying a flag. That yeah. fish is going to be way up there. So, <laughs> you know, kind of get used to them. You don't want to jump out there and get some of those old big long ones right off of that. All right. Brian asks, what's the best size hook to use with the average minnow? You know, though, probably twos. Um, I, I like to, to go ahead and get that um, 
the pre-rigged uh, snail knot. Okay. You know, that, that are already pre-rigged. You can see them at Walmart Academy, places like that. I know a lot of guys, they tie their own. Uh, those gold Aberdeens are real good. I like okay. those, you know. And, right. and, and something else, too, that, that I've learned, um, and it's a little trick of the trade, especially if you're fishing in a lot of brush, you're fishing on some of the stumps out there on the river, if you'll take a cigarette lighter and, and in that hook knot, it's right in the bend. Where, where where the hook bends, okay. if you'll heat that hook just a little bit, you won't lose half as many hung because when you pull it tight, it's going to straighten that hook out. But when a fish gets on it, the fish is in that bend, and he's not putting pressure on that tip, so it won't straighten it out. But if you'll just, just heat that hook just a little bit, it'll weaken it in that bend. So when you're hung, instead of losing your, your weight, your hook, and, and those lead weights are, are pretty expensive. You can pull it through, bend it back with your pliers, put another minnow on it, and go back to fishing. All right. That sounds like a pretty good tip. All right. What's the most crappie you've caught on a trip? We've had some good days. <laughs> it's uh, uh, all within legal limits. Yeah, th there's there's a lot of days, uh, you know, and it will get a little better right now. Like I said, the crappie are just starting to come in. But uh, we, we try to shoot a, a goal for 60. Okay. You know, it's the, the limit is 30 a piece. Um, we'll go, and if I've got three people, I still just get 60. I, I think that's a great day. If you've got 60 crappie, 10-inch crappie, uh, that's a real good day for, for a group. And it doesn't matter if I've got four people. That, that's what I'm going to get. I just think you don't need to take advantage of your uh, – you know, of, of what you got out there, you know, that that's a great day. Um, some days catch 30, 40, 50, that, that's a good day. You know, mm -hmm. so it really uh, – and we've had some days that people have told us after we get our 60, they said we just want to stay out and see how many we can get. And it's – when it's on, you can hammer them pretty quick, <laughs> <laughs> especially long lining. You go through a school of fish and all 10 rods go down, I bet that gets uh, to be a lot long. of fun in the yeah, boat. It don't take long when it's like that. All right. Who catches more crappie, Daryl Baker or Stanley Steed? They they're both good fishermen. You know, I know both those guys, and uh, they they're they're not only good fishermen, they're good guys, and and they can they can put you on them. They can catch the fish. So. Uh, if you're out with any one of those two guys there, you're, you're in good hands. They'll take care of you. All right. So the limit around here, 30 day or 30 per day, nine inch, nine, nine? on Neely. It's nine on Neely. Neely and, uh, the, some of the other, uh, the other Coosa lakes, Weiss is a 10 and, uh, and Gunnerful is a, a nine inch. Okay. Chris Hobbs said great videos on Lee's website. They cover a lot of these questions. Um, Thank yep. you, Chris. Ethan Martin, uh, when long lining, you put a minnow on your jig or just use a jig? At times, I will tip it, uh, and that that is a good question too. Um, and I I use that, and I know I'm talking about Bobby Garland, but I use the slab jam that they've got. Mm -hmm. uh, just it's, it's kind of like deer hunting. The more that you can fool them not only sight the the feel of that bait but the smell and taste also uh you know there's times you've got foreign matter you know gas station or oil or something on your hands uh i like that slab jam and the, they make a uh, a little uh crappie niblets okay. little things you can add some days you don't need them but but i've watched it a lot of times when you go through these schools of fish and you can see the rod tips just bump and they're not eating it. Okay. You know, that's when you can either tip it with a minnow. And a, a minnow is great to do. I mean, that it's hard to beat the real thing. But just some little something to give them another little, little incentive to hold on to it. You know, either that crappie niblet, uh, the, the Bobby Garland slab jam, just, uh, and they make different scents that you can kind of put okay. on them. I, I think it does help at times. All right. little delay there all right uh do you long line from the back or the front of the boat it and that's totally up to you ever how you want to do it um you know it's 
just as long as you're presenting that bait and have your rod set up where you can get to them and work them, you know, you don't want to have to take off from the, the front of the boat and run all the way to the back to grab some rods. You know, you want to make it where it's a, it's, it's a fun day and it's an easy day just to reach down and grab a rod or two. Right. I, know, I know now I'm, I'm running with the, uh, my, my Bucks Island boat here, uh, a 21 foot center console. So I've got my rod holders set up where my clients don't have to just sit in okay. that one place. They can get up and stand around my console. I've got some holders here or there. And, and my job is what I try to do. I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep that boat and, and keep them in fish and, and, and work it. And I watch those rod tips. Okay. So a lot of times I get people in, the bite's not always uh, just dragging that rod back down the water. You know, it may just be a little subtle shake, a little tip. And so when I can tell them, hey, grab that middle one, you know, grab it. That that front rod's got one on it, you know, and it's something that's not real visible, but just that little something different. Okay. You know, so so it's keep an eye, watch your rod tips. That's that's another big thing with that long line. And watch your rod tips because sometimes it's not an explosive strike. All right. Tammy, what color jig do you use in dirty water? Uh, something with some chartreuse. I like that black and chartreuse. Um, an orange, you know, orange chartreuse picks up real good. Uh, and I'm, even the pinks, you know, something with some pink in it, a bright pink color seems to do real well in that, that dirty water. When I can get by with it too, uh, maybe something with a little more thump to it in that stained water it, you know at times they you can pull something with a curly tail that's going to put a little vibration off a little bit of thump okay you know just something a little different mike godfrey do you like using live bait better than jigs it it, it all depends when, when i can i love to use jigs uh you you need to work that rod a little bit more with a jig you know put a little shake to it but a lot of times like i said that uh, the real thing is hard to beat all right shane uh just look up weiss lake and a lot of your videos uh will come up um let's see i think uh so yeah guys if you if you want to learn more about lee um I know he's Lee Pitts Guide Service over on Facebook, where you can just look, you know search for Lee Pitts. Um, pretty easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you got your uh, website to get in touch with you, Lee Pitts Outdoors. Lee Pitts Outdoors. Lee Pitts Outdoors. The best way is just give me a call. You know, I, I'm I'm still kind of old school. I like to I like to talk to you. Uh, I'm not much on coming in off the water and and getting my gear set up. Want to jump in there and do a lot of emails. So. All right. Don't don't think I'm I'm being rude to you if I if I don't get back with you real soon. You got your phone number on your Facebook page. Phone numbers on All my right. Facebook. All right, and if if nothing else, give us a shout. We'll give you. We'll, we'll definitely get you in touch with Lee. Yeah, the best thing to do is call me. Just call and we'll talk fishing. All right. Um. Ronnie asks, when is the best time to start shooting docks? right now uh there and it's going to get better the cooler it gets um you know fall is always a great time you know the fish really really jump on those dock poles and on floating docks and and some big fish get up there too you know it's a lot of times you may have to um uh, to dig through a lot of those seven and a half eight inch fish to get to the good ones but but you can catch some really really big fish shooting docks all right so do you sit down to shoot docks i don't um I, I i in a bass boat is a little different than the setup i have now i've, I've got some double seat systems kind of like what we've got here with the millennium seats on it yep. that i can set down the the side of the of my aluminum boat because it sets down in it and it gives everybody a great angle you know gotcha. they can sit there and they're low to the water uh that they, they've got a, a you know, a nice shot to skip at. Uh, if not, I try to squat down or bend down. You know, if I'm in my bass boat shooting, I want to get that low center of gravity where I've really got a clear shot to skip it as far as I can under that dock. Well, I know if you are sitting down, these millennium seats 
if you aren't familiar with these, um, we we uh, we always keep a few in the part store, and we got one set out. And uh, there's no telling how many lies have been oh. told in that, that <laughs> chair and the, the part store with Pat. But uh, they're uh, they're comfortable. They, they're as great. All get I out. mean, if you've not tried the Millennium seats, you really need to. to if nothing else, get you one. You, your buddies yeah. can oh, yeah. sit yeah, on yeah. The, the old ones, but get you one so you'll be comfortable. Um, and I mean, they, they let air flow through and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So let's see here. Mike Godfrey leaves the man on Weiss Lake. Well, thanks, Mike. I, I think he, no, well, he's, he, see, he's ready to go fishing. That's yeah. What it is. He, buttering you up. <laughs> he's ready to go out and catch some. Chuck said, I like old school. Well, I think, uh, I think Lee's definitely got a bit of the old school. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Well, hey, that's about it. <laughs> Can't ask for more than that. Um, nothing else. Uh, go to Little River with a cooler and sit down and chat like the night uh, before CRTT. Is that an abbreviation I am not familiar with? I'm not sure, but it's a it's a. That's a good place. That's, if you want to go and talk fishing, that's a good place to go sit down. And, uh, and they, they do it about every day, too. <laughs> so that's a good place to be. Well, I know uh, there's a lot of crappie talk in the, in the part store. Um, Pat and uh, his his buddies and uh, a lot of folks, you know, that, that's they, they love to get out there and do that. Oh, so, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think uh, it looks like we're going to, trickle off uh we've been going for about an hour now so um I, let me ask you this um what what is your personal best crappie that you've what's the biggest crappie you've caught uh three nine is, is the biggest i've caught and like three i said I, I had that three eight here but uh three nine is, is what's the going best on one for me i had to get one photo bomb <laughs> uh, is it a photo bomb or a video bomb or a live bomb? I don't know. Are we allowed to say bomb on the internet? Facebook might uh, no, might shut us down. Just say bomb by itself. I think that's where you get. Yeah. Okay. okay. Say All something right. like photo or video. All right. So three three <laughs> nine it has to have an abbreviation with it. Yeah. So three three nine is your largest. Mm -hmm. And you know that there's there's a a two pound crappie is a big crappie. I mean a two pounder is a big one. All right, and uh, I had some guys that uh, they they went out with me last year, and when we first got started, I was getting the the. I know you're ready to go. I'll make it quick. No, no, no. I, was getting, I was getting the rods. Hey, out. if they hang out and listen, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm game. But uh, they they told me, said, "Now look, we want to go ahead and tell you something. We've been catching three and three and a half pound crappie up at Lanier where we fish." He said, "What do you think about that?" I said, "You should stay at Lanier." <laughs> and I thought, oh man, this is going to be a rough day. He said, we 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 catch a bunch of them. We catch twenty or thirty of them. And I'm thinking, my lord. So all of a sudden, I'm getting the rods out, and the first rod goes down. And it's one about a pound and a quarter. And he said, oh, all right, we done got one three pounder in. So, gotcha. Until you throw him on them D liars and throw him on the scales, a lot of those pound and a halfers look like three pounders. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's that's what I call them D liars. You got to throw them on the scale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so what we've been doing, so we'll uh, we'll round that up to a, a square four, um, and I'm going to scroll up and down the comments. You tell me when to stop, and whoever I stop on, I'm going to count uh, count up four, and that'll be our winner. As, okay. as random as I can get for uh, for doing these live. I'm not even going to look. I'm All right, you, you tell me you tell me when to stop. Anytime. All right. All right. Let's go up. One, two, three, four. Steve West. Steve. Steve's going to get uh, five extra tickets put in our raffle um, for all of our virtual uh, door prize giveaways. Um, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on a Monday afternoon. I hope none of you are going to get in trouble at work uh, <laughs> for talking fishing instead of working. Um, uh, and I know, I think I saw a couple of high schoolers in there, so I hope you're not cutting class to come, uh, come, you certainly didn't cut class ever. Did you? I, you know, I can't remember. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember a lot of my educational days. All right. Well guys, thanks so much for hanging out. 
Lee, thanks for, for coming in and talking crappie. I, I, it sounds like uh, I, I kind of felt like we turned into a pretty long, uh, long line in uh, lessons. Yeah, so. and, uh, and like I said, I, ho I hope more and more people are starting to do that. So I think it's something that, you know, uh, right. the more they start trying it and, and looking at it, they'll want some more hints. All right. Well, guys, uh, that sounds like a great, uh, great Bucks Island Live. We could get out and maybe do some long line, and that might yeah. be kind of fun. Um, and if there's sitting down involved, um, I might enjoy that. Yeah. You know, holding that, uh, holding that camera up for a couple hours can, uh, can definitely get old. So, <laughs> but it's fun. It is definitely, uh, this has been a fun weekend. So guys, we will be on, uh, we'll be doing tech Tuesday tomorrow. So if you haven't caught that, I'll be on with that, uh, guy that just, uh, video bombed us, uh, Israel. And, uh, we've been having a lot of fun answering questions anywhere from, what fuel should I put in my boat to, you know, my 1997 Johnson's making a click, click, click noise. What do you think it might be? He, he's the guru. He, he, he is. Whatever question you has, he, he can, he's got an answer for it and knows what to do with it. Um, so we've been having a lot of fun with that. So please uh, join us. We'll roll that right into Fish Fest. We'll pick another winner out of that one tomorrow morning uh, at 1130. So thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a great day. And uh, remember, crappie is the, uh, the discount code over on the website. Um, so you can buy there today or come on in to the, uh, the loft any day uh, the rest of this week. Get 10% off and earn more tickets into the raffle. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you later.